Hey guys, it's Spooky Noodles, and I am here with a box from the Horror Lady from eBay. And, uh, she got me some, or not she didn't, she didn't get me any, uh, I bought them. But, uh, I thought I'd share with you this little haul I got. Um, don't worry, the, uh, Richard Lehman Part 2 haul is coming. I'm just waiting for a few books right now, so... Uh, but I guess this will probably have a book in here that goes with it, so why don't we just go ahead and start with the first book, and that is, of course, not here. What the heck? Oh! That's why it's not here. I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> All right, well, we'll start with this book right here. And that is Edward Lee's The Chosen. Got a hot babe there and knife. You don't know what's going to go on. They take what they want and they want. Oh, they take what they want and what they want is your soul. That's what it says. Right, I'll read the back for you guys this time. Restaurant manager Vera Abot, Abut, Abot has come to the inn to embark on the job of her dreams. But from the day she arrives, her dream turns into a horrifying nightmare. She hears strange footsteps, sees faceless figures in the dead of night, and is tormented by erotic dreams in which a hideous stranger makes love to her. Oh boy, the past never dies, it only sleeps, waiting to unleash a new cycle of bloodshed and terror. The For the inn is a breeding ground for unspeakable atro atrocities, I wanted to say something else, I don't know why, um, and now the time has come for Vera to be initiated into the secret world of depravity and horror whether she wants to or not. Dun, dun, dun. So that's The Chosen by Edward Lee. I've kind of been collecting some Edward Lee books because I read, uh, I, I'm, ha I'm almost done with his story in tri uh, triage. And uh, I like the dude's writing. He does a lot of info dumping in that story, which is kind of a little upsetting, but I understand he's trying to create a world, you know? So... I get it, but I do like his writing, so I thought I'd try his other books, so I've been trying to collect it, uh, as many Edward Lee's books as I can. And I have uh, City Infernal, Infernal Angel, uh, another one of the Infernal series. Um, let's see here, Bri Brides of the Impaler. And I think that's it. And then I have this one, The Chosen. So that's the Edward Lee book. Next, we have Hellboard by Donna Reed. Now, this one just looked interesting. If I can get a good. See, it's an Ouija board. You got the plan planchette, I think that's what they're called. And the skeleton's moving it with its hand. I thought this was a classic, like, you know, uh, books from hell, paperbacks from hell type book, you know? It's, in fact, I can tell you, it's BMI. So that's interesting. But, uh, let me read the back for you. Peggy R Reardon, Peggy Reardon was the most unpopular girl in school. Her classmates taunted her about her looks, her weight, and her clumsy behavior. But Peggy had a talent hidden under her unattractive exterior. She could communicate with forces beyond, from beyond. Aided by a Ouija board, Peggy found that she could open up a whole new world for herself. Spirits didn't care if she was fat or ugly. They seemed so nice, so friendly at first. But the more she delved into the unknown, the more horror, horror, horroring the results. 
and soon people began to die. Victims of Peggy's newfound power and incarnate evil of the Hellboard. That's Hellboard by Donna Reed. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to reading this sucker, uh, but it sounded interesting to me. So I thought I'd go ahead and get it. Um, Hellboard. All right, next we have quite a few Sean Hudson books. So I wanna get into those. So first we will start off with Relics. I believe these are all UK covers. So The Bad Boy of Horror Fear. I believe that's Fear Magazine. A quote by them. I'll read the back for you guys. When a hidden chamber filled with the skulls of children is discovered by an archaeological dig, the discovery triggers a series of murders in which the victims are horrifically mutilated. Inspector Stephen Wallace must discover a, the mad killer. It is the sadistic thug responsible for organizing the barbaric dogfighting. Oh, whoops, that's a question mark. <laughs> My bad. The mysterious recluse who holds back mass orgies for heroin addict addicted teenagers? Or is it, in fact, the, an evil power so obscene that it threatens to engulf everyone? Something evil is waiting. Something monstrous is loose. I jacked up that back, but that's Relics by Sean Hudson. The next Sean Hudson book we have is Death Day. And I think there was a movie called Death Day. Or Happy Death Day, I think it was. But, uh, yeah, a terrifying novel of unimaginable evil. I like that hand coming up, clawing what it looks like a stopwatch? Oh, no, it's just a medallion of some sort. Medallion? All right, let me read the back for you guys. 400 years ago, a woman died in agony to keep its secret and went to her grave when it with it hung around her neck. Now in a desolate graveyard, a workman has unearthed the amulet by chance and decides to keep it, his first mistake. That night, the village of Medford is plunged into a nightmare of terror by the discovery of a double murder and mutilation, the first in a series of shocking killings. Whatever the amulet is found, an ancient evil is hideous, powerful, and vile, is once born again are again again reborn wow i jacked that up too and that is death day by sean hudson i haven't read any sean hudson books in fact i originally got these books just to trade them but now uh, looking at it i have an omnibus uh, or omnibus no omnibus of uh spawn slugs and erebus so I'm thinking about giving one of those a try. I hear Erebus is about a vampire, so yeah. Next, we got a really good conditioned book, except for the title is gone. But that's Sean Hudson Shadows. Enter the domain of chaos, insanity, and death. In Oxford and Paris, psychic investigators are attempting to probe forbidden areas of the mind. In New York, writer David Blake is studying the methods of miracle healer Jonathan Mathias. Driven by their own desperate motives, these researchers are about to unlock Pandora's box to unleash the horrifying forces of destruction hidden deep within us all. That's Shadows by Sean Hudson. And this is, they're all UK paperbacks, I believe. Next, we got Nemesis. Oh, something's popping out. Uh, Okie dokie. Nemesis by Sean Hudson. I'll read the bag for you guys. 
Sue and John Hackett are con contemplating the ruins of their marriage. The brutal murder of their young daughter has brought an already strained relationship to a breaking point, and to try to salvage their lives, they retreat to the small, peaceful town of Hick Hinkston. Hinkston. But Hinkston isn't peaceful anymore. It's being torn apart by a series of horrific, unexplained murders, and it holds a fateful 50-year-old secret, a secret with a, such appalling consequences that it suppose, was supposed to have died during the World War. It didn't. So that's Nemesis. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, look at that. Just look at that. Spooky. All right, and then last but not least, we have Victims by Sean Hudson. I don't know what that bombs is. You can't read Sean Hudson for more than a minute or two without starting to squirm. That's by what Darley or Daily Express. Now I'll read the back for you. This might be the most interesting Sean Hudson book I think I got out of this pile. But let's go. Some people are born to be murder victims. Fact, not fiction. Frank Miller, special effects man for countless horror films, knew that. Blinded in a bizarre accident, but then given the transplanted eyes of a murderer, Miller finds he can spot potential victims. However, in the research for a maniacal killer, the police ignore Miller's help. As the body count rises, they are forced to work with him as Miller himself finally becomes a target for the slaughter. Er, slaughterer. Will he stop the carnage or become part of it? Dun dun dun! So that's Victims by Sean Hudson. I think that's the most interesting out of this pile. Maybe Relics might be interesting too, but... Well, that's it for Sean Hudson, and now we will get to Douglas Clegg, You Come When I Call You. And I'm going to be reading my first Douglas Clegg book soon. Um, I'm going to be reading uh, Douglas Clegg's Neverland. I also have, I think, Dark of the Eye, I think it's called. But I thought I'd go and buy this one. You come when I call you. So let me read the long back. Um, the high desert town of Palmito, California has turned toxic after 20 years of nightmares. In Los Angeles, a woman is tormented by visions of a chilling past and a man steps into a house of torture. On the steps of the, a church, a young woman has been sacrificed in a ritual of darkness. In New York, a cab driver dreams of demons while awake. And a man who calls himself the Desolation Angel has returned to draw his old friends back to their hometown, a town where two decades earlier, three boys committed the most brutal of rituals, an act of such intense savagery that it has ripped apart their minds. And where, in a cavern in a place called No Man's Land, something has been waiting a long time for those who stole something more precious than life itself. It has a blurb here from a couple magazines, and one by Robert R. McCammon saying, Douglas, Clever Douglas Clegg is a weaver of nightmares. Dream weaver. And then here's one from John Saul saying, Clegg delivers. So I'll put that over there. And last but not least, I have a gift for my friend, and that is Demonic by Stephen Laws. Such a big book. All right, let me read it for y'all. And I believe this is also a, uh... yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a UK edition. I don't know what the American edition looks like, but, uh, uh, la, 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 it does not say, it does not say, it does not say, it does not say. Anyways, I'm going to move on. This is demonic. This is for my good friend E. Or Edward Lorne, as you might know him as. 
and uh, he's been looking for, you know, books by Stephen Laws, and I thought I'd ship him this one. I thought it looked really cool, the cover. It looks like, like an old house type thing. I don't know if you can see that. At first I thought it was like a machine, but now I'm looking at it and it looks kind of like a house. But, uh... Yeah, let's read the long back. Mr. Draggerman requests a, the, the pleasure of your company. If you come with us, this 50,000 is yours. You get another 200,000 when you get there. Jack D Draggerson loves deals. He made his first fortune in the fields of architecture, engineering, and design, with a reputation not only as a ruthless businessman, but also as an infamous director of some of the most extreme horror movies ever made. No one has ever seen D Draggerman for 10 years. He lives in a huge fortress he designed and built himself. Known as the Rock, its interior is a crazy structure of labyrinth descending corridors with no way out. But now a band of un our uniformed henchmen is approaching a selection of unconnected people on Draggerman's behalf. He wants them to visit him and he's prepared to pay for the privilege. Because Jack Dra Draggerman has made contact with a demonic force, a demonic force who also loves a deal. Wow, that's interesting. And it's a beautiful cover. I can see in the inside flap, it uh, has like similar uh, covers from like Macabre, Gideon, and Frighteners. And they all have very similar covers, a style, like there's a style obviously there. Here, I'll show it to you. Um, I could not figure out, I think, I believe this is the UK edition, but I'm not positive. But that's Demonic by Stephen Laws, and this is where a friend, so I'm gonna put it right here. And that's it for this little haul. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, it's been Spooky Noodles. And Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. <laughs> if you can see my hat. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, bye.